Hey everybody, welcome to another edition of Inside Guns with your host, me, the Yankee Marshall. Today I want to take two questions I've received from viewers, from multiple viewers, and combine them into one topic. The first question I'm going to put into this topic is, why do people keep buying Black Hawk Serpa style holsters? Doesn't everybody know by now how deadly they are? Does everybody have a death wish? What's their problem? And the second part of the topic, the second question is, what's the point of paddle holsters? That's pretty simple. Are there any pros to them? Should you use them or should you just stick to normal belt slide, you know, pancake style holsters, whatever, inside waistband, whatever. Uh, well, I want to take, like I said, those two questions, combine them into one topic. Uh, why do people buy Serpa holsters when they're so dangerous? And is the fact that they are uh, paddle holsters worth anything? Is that good in any way? because you know they can usually be a paddle holster or a belt slide holster. So I'm going to, like I said, combine these two topics and I'll cover it as I go. Although I'm going to cover it from a little different angle than the original person that asked the question or people asked the question uh, as to why do people buy Serpas because they're so dangerous. I'm going to go the other way because I think that whole notion that Serpa holsters are dangerous is crap. In fact, I might title this video, What's the best holster you can buy and why is it a Serpa? You know, a little hyperbole in the other direction. Because, you know, I don't prefer Serpas, but I use them. I use them quite often. There's a lot of good qualities about a Serpa holster. And none of those qualities are that it is dangerous or you're going to shoot yourself. They're nice holsters. And as far as the paddle uh, function of it, the paddle feature, that actually is a very big positive sometimes. One, if I'm lazy and I don't want to make sure I have a proper holster on my belt, blah, 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 throughout the day, I'm not going to be carrying most of the day, so I don't put on a holster in the morning, but then I want to go somewhere. Paddle holsters are great. I can just slip them on. Holds the gun nice and far from my body. It's nice and stiff, nice and sturdy. Uh, I open carry, so that holding it out far is a plus when you're open carrying. You've got plenty of room to put your shirt down around it. So I love Serpas for when I'm lazy. Also, I like the fact that they have some retention. You know, that's not a necessary thing because I usually carry in a leather holster. And I don't know if you've ever tried to come up from behind someone and pull a gun from their leather holster. It's almost impossible. I have a video where my son and his friend try it and they fail miserably. I'll put a link in the upper corner of this video to that video. You can go see. So the retention is not really that big of an issue to me. But, I mean, it's nice that it's there. And... It does not make the holster dangerous. A lot of people believe that, oh, the Serpas are dangerous, where you have to hit that button to draw the gun. That's going to put your finger in the trigger guard area, and it's going to make you fire the gun accidentally, and you're going to shoot yourself when you're drawing. That's not true at all. Not even close to being true. If you use this holster properly, it's very safe. Where people get into problems is when they're wanting to crook that finger when they're using that button. They want to punch it straight in with the tip of their finger. That's not how it's designed to be done. And that is a little bit dangerous because, you know, if you crook that finger and you pull the gun, you could slip that finger into the trigger guard, pull that trigger. Could happen. Now, it shouldn't happen if you know how to properly draw your gun, but it could. When it happens most often is when a bunch of tactical wannabe Rambos are practicing their quick draw. You know, that <laughs> as they walk backwards, that crap. Now, if you want to practice that, that's great. You do you. If you think that's a skill you need, learn it. But here's the reality uh, there's a very good argument, pretty much an indisputable argument, that the risks of training like that far outweigh the risks of never training like that. You're at greater risk of harming yourself doing that training than you are from ever being harmed by someone else because you don't know how to do it. So you might be actually increasing your risk factors in life by practicing that kind of stuff. That kind of stuff is not really necessary. If you've let someone get that close to you that's a danger to you, you failed in so many ways already. Uh, learning that bam, bam, bam thing while you're right up on someone, that is kind of like learning how to time it perfectly to jump out of your plane right before it hits the ground and roll so you don't die. How about you just practice not crashing your plane? That would be much better. Instead of spending all that time practicing something that's not very likely to ever come up or save you even if it does, why don't you learn how to fly? That would be uh, a better thing to do. And those two things are kind of similar there. But like I said, you do you. You learn what you want to learn. You take whatever risk you want to take. But the holster itself is not dangerous. 
These people that do this when they're fast drawing, they always just try to blame the holster because they don't want to accept responsibility. The only one I ever saw accept responsibility was Tex Grebner. And he said, no, it wasn't the holster. It was me. I fucked up. And he's absolutely right. A lot of these guys do it and they blame, oh, it was the holster because of the way you moved. No, you just screwed up. You were doing something dangerous. You paid the price. Accept it because that's reality. The holster itself is not dangerous. The way you're supposed to operate that holster is your finger is supposed to be like it normally would be when you're drawing, fully extended straight ahead. And if you do that, it's very natural to draw this gun. You don't even feel like you have to do anything special. It's just like when I draw from my leather holster, my finger goes to the same place and rides along the slide of the gun as I pull it out. Same thing with the Serpa. And putting your finger in the proper place releases the gun. And as long as you're keeping that finger straight and along the side of the gun like you're supposed to, unless of course you're doing some tactical garbage, you're not gonna have a problem. It is not unsafe. Now, as far as is it useful to be a paddle holster? You know, I kind of covered that already. When you're lazy, yes. But there's also another reason that paddle holsters are good. Other than holding it far out from your body and holding it very securely for your open carrying, it also is easy to take off. If you're going out on daily errands like I did today where I had to go to the post office, my son's school, etc., and I had to go inside both of them, I can't take my gun in there, and it's very obvious I'm open carrying. Even if I pulled my shirt over it, they'd see it. So I take it off and I put it in the safe in my trunk. Now, the dangerous part of that would be if I was unholstering that gun and then reholstering that gun later. That's the most dangerous time you were operating your gun or you're interacting with your gun. When you're carrying all day long, the most dangerous times are when you're actually touching the gun, taking it in the holster, out of the holster, putting it in the holster. So with a paddle holster, you can avoid that completely. You just take the whole holster off, comes right off, and you put it away without ever exposing the trigger of your gun. So it makes your day safer. So if you're knowing you're going to be taking your holster on and off all day, which you can't do with your belt unless you're wanting to get undressed behind your car every day, uh, paddle holsters are great. Like I said, I love the way they carry, the position they carry, uh, and I love the fact you can do it when you're lazy, and they come off easy when you want to take them on and off throughout the day without having to put your gun in an unsafe situation like having an exposed trigger while it's in your hand. So they're great for that. Paddle holsters are great for that. And Serpas, like I said, not dangerous at all. Once you get used to drawing from them, it's just like drawing from anything. In fact, you don't even really have to get used to it. Just pretend it's a regular holster. Don't think about the button. If you find yourself thinking about the button, you're find, going to find yourself trying to do that fingertip quirky, you know, uh, crooked finger thing. And then you might end up having some problems with your finger slipping into the trigger guard. You shouldn't, but you might. If you just pretend like that button's not there and you draw normally, it draws like butter. Reholster's excellent. You know, so easy to reholster. Just make sure your shirt's not in the way and reholster. So Serpa holsters are not dangerous. In fact, they're actually very nice, very useful, very utilitarian. And as far as the paddle aspect of them goes, that makes it very easy and very nice for lazy people like me who sometimes have to go places where I have to take off my holster. The first of which is, why do people, people, people? Today, I'm gonna to combine two questions together that I've had a bet. Why do people, God damn, people, people keep. That is something, oh my God. Uh, or combine those two. Hey everybody, Yankee Marshall here. And the second part of the uh, equation, fuck. Now the first topic part of the, why are those say, those say, fuck.